Hey Groovers, still in Hollywood at the moment. We've been seeing some fantastic sneak peeks of all of our software. This particular episode, you'll be able to download this software from lads.adobe.com and have a try of Flash Catalyst. It's for designers and it's awesome. Creating interactive designs straight out of the box, no coding, it's what I promise you. Man, there's celebrities everywhere here. They're all using it. I saw Ashton Kutcher using Flash Catalyst just yesterday. He loves it. He's a Grammy for it. Before I actually start this tutorial, I've got to say, first of all, thank you very much to Corey West, who's the Flash Catalyst Engineering Manager from Adobe Systems in San Francisco. He and his team have done such a fantastic job uh, sorting this software out for us designers that we cannot thank them enough. This is the file that we're going to use. It's actually a Photoshop file, so this will be very familiar for most of us. And what we're going to do is take this Photoshop file with all of its layers, and you can see it's got all of its layers here, just the way that designers like to lay things out in little folders and, and whatnot. We're going to take this into the new software Flash Catalyst. And if you're wondering, first of all, well, I'd like to have a go at this. How am I going to do it? I don't have Flash Catalyst. Well, here's what you do. Go straight over to labs.adobe.com. There is the URL there, labs.adobe.com. Get straight over there, and then you can download this. It's only a beta, of course, but it's Adobe Flash Catalyst Beta 2. You can download it for free and have exactly the same version of this that what I've got fully functioning. However, it is a beta, so be prepared for a few bugs, but it's certainly great fun. Now, Flash Catalyst, when we first open it, looks something like this. And what it enables us to do is create a project right from the word go, or actually create a file from a Photoshop or Illustrator document. That's what it's like at this stage. So all we do, we're going to use a Photoshop document. Click on From Adobe Photoshop Document. Okay. Then we simply find the file that we're after. Well, here it is here. It's just a native .photoshop document. Click Open, and then it will so, sort of say, OK, recognizing that we've got, you know, images, image layers, uh, shape layers, and text layers, keep editable, so we can open those up directly into Flash Catalyst and start editing it. So we're going to be able to create a fully interactive application, online application, or, you know, any type of... Uh, flash type interaction we can do with Flash Catalyst as a designer and the real key here is no code we don't need to use any code at all one of the first things you'll notice about Catalyst is that it uses terms that designers are used to like pages we can have multiple pages through here and create interactions that move between them the tools look very similar even though they're very basic the idea is to use the tools in Illustrator and Photoshop to do your design work. But there are some basic tools here. The library is the same as it is in Photoshop. Okay, or the layers rather. We also have a library here too, but the layers are the same in Photoshop. The panels are exactly the same. It looks just like the type of applications that you're used to dealing with. So that's great. Okay, so we are ready to convert something into an interactive component. What we can do is select any objects on here. So as we click on the stage here on the artboard here, we can select objects and convert them to artwork using the HUD. Uh, that's this heads up display that floats around uh, in the interface. The other way that we can do it is just come over here to the layers and you can see we've got, you know, a little folder set up. If you want to select a group of objects, you can just click right on uh, the folders of them here and I, I find that's a much easier way of doing it uh, so we select the management tab here and we want to convert that into a button this is where I would use the uh, convert artwork component so when we have objects selected this is uh, context sensitive so it will change to give you the options for whatever you've got selected so if I choose this pop down menu we're going to go ahead and convert this into a toggle button now I just need to find the toggle button there it is right there we go ahead and select it 
Now, all of a sudden, the HUD, the heads up display, changes so we can edit the toggle button appearance. Now, we can click on these buttons here, or you could simply double click it on the stage, and then we get access to all of the different states that we can assign to that button. Again, no scripting. So we also come over to the layers and the toggle button is isolated with the sub layers in it. Let me just scroll this down so you can see. These sub layers have come from Photoshop again. So to change the appearance here, we go to over, we change the state, and then we can simply change the appearance of it by turning on and off layers. So it makes it very easy. We have a down state there. So I'll just turn off some different states so it looks different. And we're not going to use the disabled state in this case. Uh, we are going to use the selected up. So that's going to look like this. The selected over, we will turn this uh, off. And we've got one more over here. We'll scroll over. Selected down, we'll go ahead, ahead and off another couple of uh, options there. So we've been, you'll notice everything else is grayed out in the background. We've been editing this particular component. To get back to editing in the entire page setup, we can just double click on the artboard or go ahead and click on this breadcrumb trail and that takes us back to the overall view. We've now created a, com a button, a component that we can test. So if we press Apple Enter or Control Enter if you're on the PC, it will build it out and then run it in a, re a web browser for us so that we can test it. So it'll just take a second while it compiles that for us. Here it comes. I'm going to operate this, operate this in Safari. We'll just load it up. There's our button. We can roll over it. We can click it and it seems to be working. So we've created a very basic interaction using Flash Catalyst. Now that we've got a button created, let's get it to do something. We're going to add one more interaction to our document. We're going to make that button switch between two different pages. So we'll go to the pages states area at the top of screen here and duplicate the current state. So now we have page one and page two. On page one, we're going to go ahead and delete this area here so that there's a point of difference between the two pages. Now, when I go ahead and hit delete, it doesn't actually delete that component from the layers. All it does is hide it because it needs to still be there on page two. So when I click on page two, it's actually still there. So you don't have to worry about actually hitting the delete key. It only hides it for that particular page or state, depending on what you want to call it. Now, select the button and we can add an interaction to it. There's the button. We come over to the interactions panel and say, add interaction again no coding. Let's let me bring this out for you so we can have a good look. On click, play transition to state, and you can see we can play videos, we can go to URLs, play sequences, whole bunch of stuff that we can do. So play transition to state to page two. So when we're on page one, you click on this button, please take us to page two. Okay? So that's fantastic. And then you'll notice down the bottom, we have a timeline down the bottom of the interface. Here we have a timeline that says state transition, page one to page two, do a fade in. And what we want to do is make that fade in nice and smooth. So we go ahead and click smooth transition. Now we can do a number of other things. We can change the duration. We can, we can move these things along so it takes a minute for that to happen. We can even do resizing type fade-ins or transitions, even some 3D ones. Very, very easy to create. So <clears throat> we have created our inter interaction. Let's test it one more time just to see, to see how it is to do that. This is just the absolute beginning of what you could do with Flash Catalyst. You can create scroll bars data lists. We can make a working scroll bar here. Do all sorts of interactions, even including video and 3D transitions. But for now, when we click on management, there we go. There's our nice fade in. Basic interaction. I'm sure if you'd like to find out more about Flash Catalyst, I'd go along to tv.adobe.com and 